first video lecture. Uh, it's Friday and we're going to be looking at section 2.7. It's a short section. Uh, it would take us a lot longer if we had done it with a lot of discussion in class. Um, but the homework is a little harder. So I'm just going to put it out there right now to work together in your groups as best as you can to get the homework done. Uh, I just got off of a, remind, or a, Zoom, a Zoom call with a, a student in another class and it worked out really well. So if you guys ever want to Zoom me together, I can see you guys, you can see each other, you can see me, and we can kind of work through the homework problems like we did in class on Wednesday because these are definitely challenging. But we have a week to do it. So if you guys want to get together and try it and then run your answers by me and we'll talk about what your answers are, that would be the best case scenario, okay? Uh, so keep that in mind. All you have to do um, is text me through mine that says, hey, I want to do a Zoom room, and honest to goodness, it will be less than 30 seconds and we'll see each other, okay? So I want you to, guys to keep that in mind. You can do it on your phones or on your laptop. So this section t continues about mean and median. Uh, but uh, it, it's two problem situations and we're not going to do the first one. So I'm going to flip, and I was doing it earlier so I'm going to cover up my answers. Um, I'm going to flip and we're going to play with problem situation two that says understanding trends and data. And we actually looked at this earlier in your PNL. This was talking about uh, prices of homes. And it's between 1963 and 2014, and something really unusual happened uh, with the mean and the median. So the median's the dark bar, and remember the median is a position. It's the middle position. And the average, or the mean, is the lighter graph. So something really unique happened. So back in the 60s and the 70s, it was about the same. Same thing, same prices, the mean and the median were about the same. But then when we hit maybe the early 80s, all of a sudden there was a split in the data. And the mean started to get a lot higher than the median. And so um, we're going to study why that happened. Like what happened? Like what happens when the mean is bigger than the median? So I made a little example, just a real basic one, to look at some data sets where that happens, like just some real basic ones. So I said, what happens in order for the mean to be higher than the median? So I just made a set of just simple, five simple data values, so it's easy for us to find the middle piece because they're written in order. And so I'm hoping everyone with this five pieces of data would agree that the mean is three, or the median, I'm sorry, the middle piece is three because the median is a position, so it's not impacted by the outer values. The mean, however, is, because for the mean, you add them up and divide by the total. So that big value is going to be included in the mean. Now, I could have made that 10,000, 100,000, a million, or a billion, and it doesn't impact the median. However, the bigger I make that value, the bigger is going to impact the mean. So the mean is going to get pulled away from that median by a ton. Here, I'll add it up. You ready? 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 10,000. So the mean of this is to over 2,000. But the median is just 3. So it's when you get these huge values that are impacted by pulling that mean away from the median. Now, this can happen in the other direction, too, right? So if the mean is less than the median, this is the same thing, right? Except that you get the extreme values on the left-hand side of the median. So I, did, I didn't make this too extreme. I could have made those negatives, and then it really would have impacted it. But the median is 3, or the median is 5 for this one. And you can see you've got a lot of smaller values to the left than values that are extreme to the right. So the mean is not going to be too much smaller, but it'll be smaller. Let me just calculate it. I don't know what it is. Yeah, there it is. You see it? It's 3.6. So it's definitely smaller than the median. All right? So let's think about what was happening then to housing. So for housing, it must have happened around the 80s where we started to get salaries that were extreme. Like, think about the CEOs of different companies. 
that now could afford making these multi, multi, multi million dollar homes, right? So that's not going to impact the median, the middle guy like me. But when you add the mean, right, when you add them all those values, now all of a sudden we've got all these multi million dollar homes included in the mean, the average, and that was pulling it away from the middle guy, right? So and it, it started to get more and more and more extreme. Like the gap's really big here in the early 2000s, okay? So that's what was happening. So people started to have all this excess money. And so what they were doing is they were putting it into making these crazy big homes. And so that's why the mean, all of a sudden, got pulled away from the median. All right, so now let's look at some, let's look at some problems. You ready? So the first one, and now I'm on the next page, I'm looking at problem four. They're going to pull a little sample. They're going to sample from 1977, take a little sample of, of home prices, and then they're going to ask us, is, are the, is this a reasonable sample from 1977? So this is where we would have you guys work in groups in class. So take a pause. Look up 1977 on your graph, and what I want you to do is I want you to find the mean and the median for 1977, okay? So pause the video, look at your graph, and try to figure out what the mean and the median would be for 1977. We would discuss this as a group and I'd go around in groups and ask everyone what the results were if we were together. So we'll do that kind of the same, but first you gotta do some work and then we'll come back and we'll discuss. So pause the video and then we'll discuss. All right, so hopefully you're back, okay? You've looked at the graph and you found 1977 was somewhere around here. And you could see that the median is a little bit lower than the mean, but not excessively, right? Um, it's just slightly lower. So I just did a range of answers and thought, okay, people would probably look at the median maybe somewhere between 48,000, 49,000. is slightly under the 50,000 tick line, right? And then the mean, which is a little bit above it, I said, oh, maybe the range of values you guys might give me would be 50,000 to 55,000, right, if you were looking at the graph. So when I looked at it, I thought, oh, these are probably some of the spreads of answers that I would get. And then this maybe would be the spread of answers that I would get. So looking at these off the graph, is this a reasonable table? Well, the first thing I did is I looked at the median and the median, since these are written in order, and we'll work our way, you know, to get to the center. I'm looking at the median as 48,800. I'm like, yeah, okay, that's good. It kind of falls close to the data values that we got off our graph. You agree with that one? And then the mean is slightly bigger, not excessively bigger, but slight, sleep, slightly bigger. So let's look at this. So. The smallest data value we have is 35,000, and the biggest we, or the median is 48,000. So the difference between the smallest piece of data and the largest piece of data, I don't know if you can see that, is about 13,500. From small to median, I keep saying the biggest, small to median. And then from the middle to the largest piece of data, is a bigger spread. Do you see that? is 28,000. From the median to the biggest piece of data, we have about 28, 29,000. So do you see the spread from the median to the biggest piece of data is pretty big compared to the smallest. So those larger values are going to pull the mean away from the median in the larger direction. So that would make sense with the data we've collected that the mean is going to be a little bit larger. It's not a huge difference. It's not like this is a million. But it's going to make the mean a little bit larger than the median. Right? So that so this makes sense. Like this pool of data, it definitely makes sense. All right. So now what they're going to do is they're going to give you possible sets of data from the year 2005. So this would take, if we were doing it together in class, 
it would take a chunk of time. Like this would take at least a half an hour, if not longer, to analyze each of these tables. So I, I need you to pa do a lot of video pauses and pretend that you're working with your groups. So what I need you to do is go to 2005, and then I need you to look up what you think the median and the mean would be for 2005, okay? So do this, because this is kind of stuff that's on the final. You have some graph reading. So pause the video, look for, find 2005 on your graph, and see if you can identify what the mean and the median would be. And then once you write that down, I wrote it down on my graph, um, come back, come back, and then and we'll see if we were close. Okay, so pause, do a little work, little leg work, and then we'll come back and see how you did. Okay, so hopefully you took some time and looked at your graph, and this is what I got. So I looked up 2005, okay, and remember the median is the darker one. The tick marks are worth about 10,000, so I looked at it and I'm like, ah, it's just a little bit lower. It's like one tick mark lower than the 250 marker. So I said the median was 240,000. And then I said the mean, I couldn't tell. It looked like it fell right on the tick, but maybe slightly lower. So if you gave me answers, if you wrote down answers, you know, somewhere around those, then you hit it perfectly. You, you read the graph really well. If you didn't, then give me a shout, right? And we'll, we'll talk on Zoom, and you can walk me through what, what you did, and then we can see where you're thinking was going. Okay? So we located the median. We located the mean. We're, we're good to go. So now let's look at the data sets. And I apologize. I only brought... <laughs> I only brought one copy home for me, so the table I was marking all up, and I'm like, oh, geez, i got to use this for my video, so I apologize for the mess that I made out of my tables, but I wanted to work through it first, so we'll just ignore all these things that I've crossed off, because those are my thoughts, and then, we'll, and then you'll see, we'll see how you did. So, let's just start, I'm going to give you, like, a, a hint that I want you to do, and I want you to start off by, first of all, ignoring all the marks I have on my tables. And I want you to find which graphs have a median that are around 240,000. So pause the video and look at the five tables and see which ones have a median that's around 240,000. So we'll start there, okay? So pause the video and then make little marks of the, first of all, the tables that have a median that we want. All right. So the median, since the data is in order, it's not too terrible to look at the medians. They're just this middle row right here. And so when I was looking at these, I was thinking, yeah, it looks like A, B, D, and E are potentials for 2005 because the medians fall around 240,000. That one's a little high, but we'll deal with that. But it could it could work, right? We might have to cross it off. But these four are potentials for question A. It says which of the data could represent the data uh, could represent the data in the graphs. So we definitely can eliminate C from that because its median is not even close to 240,000. So we got that one eliminated. All right. So the mean is 300,000, around 295, 300,000. Yeah, I'll write both. You know, whichever one you, you came up with is good. So pause the graph. This is where I'd have you guys discuss. And see which ones, now we're not going to look at C. C's out of the contention. A, B, D, and E, which ones can we eliminate? We're going to eliminate two of them that could not possibly have a mean that's 300,000. So pause the video, stare at them for a while, and this is where I'd go around the room and ask what groups what you came up with. I'm telling you right now, there's two of them that won't work. Which ones, ignore my X's, which ones could not possibly have 
a mean of 300,000 and then come back when you've made your choice. Okay. So I'm hoping you looked at set A and said there is no way that that could have a mean of 300,000 because none of the data values get to 300,000. So if I add these up and divide by the total, there's no way that the mean could be 300,000 because they don't even touch 300,000. Right? That makes sense, doesn't it? So there's no way that A could have a mean of 300,000. And on that note, I'm hoping that you're going to see that D, for the same reason, could not possibly have a mean of 300,000 because when you add those up and divide by the total, how are you going to hit 300,000 when that one piece of data gets close to 300,000? Does that make sense? I'm hoping that makes sense. So we can cover up A and we can cover up D. All right, we cover up A, we cover up D. So our only choices then would be set B and set E, right? These are the choices for data sets that could come close to a mean of 240 and then a potential mean of 300,000. Now, let's see if it makes sense that the data value gets pulled away from the mean. Remember, we have to have these extremely high housing prices. And so we're looking at 240, right? These fall about the same on the smaller end, right? They're small, but do we have enough bigger numbers to pull away from that 240,000? Now look at this. These are pretty extreme, right? Wouldn't you say that those two values are extreme? So even though, but look, 240 and 800, 240,000, 84,000, know, they're far apart, less than 100,000 far apart. And then this one we have like 600,000 more. So this is really going to pull that mean away from the median. So B definitely has a potential where the mean is much higher than the median. Same with set E, right? Like, look at this. So this is not even... You know, it's a little over $100,000 less, like a little over 100000 But here to here, oh, we have like over four hundred, close to $450,000 more from here to here. So that's going to, that big value is going to pull that mean away from the median. So it's going to make it larger. Now, if you want to pull out your calculator and check it, you can. But those are the ones that are potentials, right? That when they asked on the previous page, on the next page, they said, which set of data could represent the data in the graph? B and, B and E could, right? Can I okay, see that? There it is. B and E could. Because the median hits the mark, and the mean is pulling the, the, the data value above the, the, the median pretty significantly. All right. So we've taken care of B and E. So that's why I cross those off. So we've taken care of B could be from 2005 and E could be from 2005 for sure. Okay, without a doubt. All right, so let's look at the other two questions. So we've taken care of B and E. Those are from 2005. All right, the next question says, which data set right here would likely have a mean that is less than the median. So if you have a mean that's less than the median, you've got to have some pretty small values compared to the upper values. So we're going to have values that are much less than the median, and then the upper values are going to fall around the median. All right, so take a pause, turn your graphs over, and see which ones, we're not looking at B and E, which ones, A, C, or D, are going to have really small values, but the upper values are not going to be that much larger than the median. Not much larger at all. To so take a pause, this is where I'd have you discuss it as a group. You've got three sets left. Which one has a mean that is smaller than the median? So take a pause and tell me, come back and tell me what you think. 
All right, I'm hoping you chose D. Now let's look at this. So you've got 240,000. 74,000 is pretty small, right? Compared to the 240,000, especially when you look at this. So, so do you see from 240,000, it's just 11,000 more. These are all kind of tight. Don't you agree that these are kind of tight around the 240,000? But these ones drop pretty significantly. Right? This is only $11,000 difference from here. From here to here, it's over $100,000 difference. So this is going to pull that mean away from the median in the smaller direction. So D is going to be the one set where the mean would be less than the median. Okay, last question. Which of the data sets would have a mean and median that are they're pretty close together? So if the mean and the median are pretty close together, oh, I'm going to cross off D, we just use D, then all the data values are kind of going to huddle together, okay? They're all going to kind of huddle together so the increments are, are pretty similar. So take a pause, right, and see which one you got left, A and C. A and C is what's left. So I'm hoping you looked at A. Now look at the spread. If the mean and the median are close together, one of the cases is there's not a lot of spread in the data. Like it all kind of increments pretty closely. So even the smaller ones will outweigh the bigger ones. So do you see the spread is not that much. Uh, there's not, if you, if you work your way up um, from here to here, what, like maybe a $13,000 difference, and from here to here, about the same, right? It's not that big of a difference. So if you add these up and divide by the total, since there wasn't a lot of difference and not a lot of spread away from that median, then the mean's going to kind of be really close to the median. There won't be a lot of spread. So set A is going to be the answer to that last one. Now set C, it didn't fall, it wasn't the one that we would chose, would have chosen for our data set for 2005 because it doesn't hit 300,000. But let's just look at it. I'm thinking for set C that the mean is probably going to be a little bit larger than the median. Um, so here, we'll just make sure we answer our question. So for this guy, the data set that would have a mean and median that are close together, that would have been A. So C is not, doesn't fall into any of the categories. And the reason why, I think, is that, and I haven't calculated these, but we're just kind of thinking about it. There's a 40,000 difference between the median and the smallest piece of data. But to go from here to here, it's definitely more than 40. It's a pretty big chunk. It's just about 100, not quite, like 90,000. So for this, I'm thinking that if you calculated it out, the mean is going to be above the median. It's not going to really fall right at it. It's not going to fall that much bigger, but there's still enough of a pull in this direction that it's going to be bigger than the median. So, so there wasn't an option for C. Okay, there wasn't an option for C. All right, so that's it. Um, that's the lesson for the day. It would have taken a lot longer than this video because there would have been a lot of pauses and discussion. Uh, the homework, I want you to try it, right? I'm not going to give you any answers because we didn't get to discuss it. Um, you do have to do number two. That's the only one. Um, number two, this graph I'm going to tell you, is just a snapshot of this graph. They zoomed in between 2003 and 2014. So this graph, they zoomed in on this graph. So you can kind of see it's the median, and they zoomed in on that graph. So they want you to just talk a little bit about the zoom in. You remember it's really exaggerated because it doesn't start at zero. So uh, it's challenging. This homework is definitely challenging. But you're not alone, right? You have each other. You have me. And so I really hope that you'll take advantage of, of the resources that we have where we can get together. Uh, you're not meant to do this alone. 
right? This course was never meant to be where you have to sit at home and figure things out on your own.